He had a few followers, and eventually he settled in an apartment in Brooklyn and built a community, a cooperative community. He acted as a benevolent father, his wife as a compassionate mother. They found jobs for the people who were in their community. Most of them worked outside the apartment, and they pooled the money that they brought in, and they bought secondhand clothes, and they avoided alcohol, and they avoided drugs, and they didn't smoke. They had rules like that that made them feel that they were part of a special community. This is a picture of the house in Sayville that Father Devine was living in by the 1920s. He moved his community from Brooklyn to this site. Now, this site was about 60 or 70 miles east of New York City on the south shore of Long Island, a predominantly white community, a middle class community, a resort community on the shore. And the people around Father Divine, after he bought this house, were not very comfortable with his being there. And one of the difficulties was that he offered free food to everybody who came to his dinners. He offered free clothing. He would provide housing insofar as he could to people who were destitute and in need of it. He also had an employment service so that he found jobs for many of the people who lived with him in this house or outside of it. By the end of the 1920s, he had many followers, and many of them were both black and white by now. He now has an interracial community. There was a lot of hostility, however, from the neighbors. There were too many visitors who came to this house. Uh, they stayed up too late at night singing and disturbed the neighborhood, and so they brought pressure against uh, him and tried to persuade the authorities to investigate. So the authorities did do one thing, to investigate. They hired secretly a woman from Harlem, a black woman, a handsome young woman, to come and stay in the community for two weeks and find out what it was like from the inside. And the result was that she found everything was okay, all for all legal, she couldn't find out where the money came from that made this uh, enterprise possible. And they dropped the investigation, which was nothing illegal that they could possibly Nevertheless, not long after that, pressure from the neighbors still continuing to get part of the wanted him out of the whole neighborhood. What happened was that uh, he was taken to the court along with a good many of the members of the community as a nuisance. And uh, the judge, Judge Smith, uh, freed almost everybody except Father Divine and kept him in jail. Finally sentenced him to a year in jail as a nuisance to the community. Uh, a few days after that happened, the judge suddenly died. Reporters came to the jail and asked Devine how he felt about it, and he said, I hated to do it. <laughs> that expression was widely repeated in the press. He became famous for the first time as a result of saying that. And soon everybody all over the country knew that he would get some more push out of Sayville, and that he was a preacher who believed in feeding the poor for free. And he became very well known indeed. And he soon moved out of Sayville and kept the ownership of his house in his movement. And the movement that that house is still there, and I've been there. I was there even this summer for a divine dinner. The movement still exists. Mother Divine, the second Mother Divine, is in charge of it. And uh, this place is still a going concern. When Father Devine left Sayville, he went to Manhattan. He based himself now in Harlem for the first time, and he established many communities that were like the one in Sayville, on the Sayville Mall. <coughs> they were cooperative communities, they were nonviolent, they were run by volunteers, they were run by followers of him, and so on. In 1935, he had, he had established probably 50 communities in the New York metropolitan area, and he was 
was looking for opportunities to establish still more. And he established this community in New Falls, on the western side of New Falls, in 1935, the first one in Ulster County. Why did he choose Ulster County? And it's rather hard to give a certain answer to that. But it was the Depression time, property was cheap, that certainly helped. It was a beautiful area uh, where many people would like to live if they had a chance. That was a factor. It was within driving distance of New York. He moved around primarily in a luxurious car by this time. And he could drive up here uh, easily. Uh, that was probably a factor. But perhaps the really crucial factor, as far as I can tell, was that Father Divine finally found a real estate dealer who was willing to sell property to him. That was a difficulty because Ulster County was overwhelmingly white and the general feeling was that you didn't want blacks to come into your neighborhood. To have them come somewhere else is okay, but not in my backyard. And the real estate dealer that he found was John DeLay of Rosendale. John DeLay near where the railroad station was, at the upper end of the trestle, so it was the southern end of the trestle. He lived up on the hill up there. And John DeLay was willing to take the risk, even though most people weren't. This particular house belonged to his brother-in-law, a Brooklyn man, who he was willing to sell. And so it came into the hands of Father in my community. If you are in New Paltz and about the bridge over the Walk Hill River in the winter, you can see this house because you look over the flats, excellent bottom farmland, river bottom land. You can see this on a rise at the end of the flats, about a mile from the bridge, perhaps. In the summer, there are too many you know, leaves on the trees and you can't quite see it from New Paltz. Father Divine Community, when they occupied this building, built other additional buildings. They built a garage with residents over it. They built several other buildings around it. And they operated a farm of about 32 acres in connection with this house, uh, using some of that rich bottom land and some of the best land in the Hudson Valley. Some of you will recognize this picture as the, uh, the divine movement called the Kingston Mansion. By uh, later that same year, 1935, they already owned this mansion. The mansion building is the one at the left. The one, the building at the right, that's farther back, was added by the divine community. Uh, they built it themselves and used it especially as a men's residence. Well, they used the main building uh, as a, primarily a women's residence and a kitchen and dining room, and they also have an apartment for Father Divine and his wife. And this is a picture of the way the building looks now, and it happens that the young lady in the picture is sitting in, our, in this room today, mm -hmm. and it happens that somebody else here is a friend of Professor Judy Pat, who owns this house, who is a professor of art at Bard College. The house is in excellent shape. It's in, marvelous mansion is located on Chapel Street in the Wilbur section of Kingston, not far off Wilbur Avenue. It became the custom quite frequently for the followers of Father Divine to lease a steamer on the Hudson River every now and then and make a trip up the Hudson River to visit Ulster County and all the sites in Ulster County that, that belong to the Father Divine Movement. This is one of the ships that was so leased. New Pulse had more than one house that belonged to the Father Divine Movement. One was on the west side of town, the one we saw before. This one was on the east side of town and up these corners. This was formerly a boarding house, and the Father Divine Movement used it as a boarding house, and summer boarding house particularly. But not long after they bought it, the, the building burned down.